lessons to a minimum. This morning we are in the book of Acts, continuing through, and we've come to our last Sunday of the year. Amazing what 2020 has shown us and what we have gone through in this year. However, we are still here, and God has brought us thus far. And so, Acts chapter 5, we've come as far as verse 32 where we left off. And today's message is, what an effect, what an effect as we close out this chapter going out to verse 42. We will look at a couple of things, but really, um, this is just like almost like a storyline of something that took place. Remember, the uh, apostles, or yes, the apostles, they were locked up and they got released. And so we are in that time. But I want us to think about this year and how we face some trying times in life this year. Some harder than others. Some have lost loved ones and others had lost jobs and faced many life challenges while others were overwhelmed by just being stuck in the house. You remember those shelter-in-place months? And so, you know, stillness was killing many of us, just alone with that. But when you step back and take a look, it hasn't been all that bad in light of a whole year, right? Especially... For those of us who know Jesus, you know, we face some ups in our walk this year. We face some downs, but it's so easy to get caught up in the downs and forget about the ups. And you know, when you think about this today, I believe God wants us to think about the effects he is having on our lives and what effects are we having on the lives of others. Jesus had truly been an effect on these apostles' lives, and they were affecting other lives by and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it was evident that the Holy Spirit was with them. We left off with Peter and the apostles now in front of the religious leaders after being miraculously freed from prison. And they tell them of Jesus being the Prince and Savior who has come to give repentance and forgiveness of sins and were witnesses of these things. The religious leaders had been studying God, understand this, but these guys had been engaged and experiencing God through various encounters by simply walking in obedience to God's mission. You see this here? They, they were being directed by what to and not to do when it comes to religious activities. However, these guys were walking in the power of the Spirit and just simply obeying God's mission. As you pick up in verse 33, it says, When they, speaking of the religious leaders or the Sanhedrin, they heard this because of the, um, their... their Um, boldness to speak about Jesus it says they were furious and plotted to kill them then one of the council stood up a Pharisee named Gamaliel a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while when we look at verse 33 look here the truth hurts And these people here, this word furious, simply means this. They were cut to the heart. Peter and the apostles had been communicating all the words of this life. And notice the content of the message that is really found in verses 30 through 31. And they were pointing people to the Prince and Savior who would give them repentance and forgiveness of sins. But notice how one of the council, when the council hears this, they are furious. Look here. This this word could also be translated to be sawn in two. They, They were cut. And here when we see this, when they were cut, look what they do. They plan to... Do what? 
kill them. They want to slaughter them. Their idea is that they would, you know what? They would take counsel together to kill them, to destroy them, to do away with them. This was their plan. But notice how in verse 34, I believe God intervenes. He uses one of their people to stand up and notice how we see here a Pharisee. His name is Gamaliel. If you have gone through the book of Acts, you know that in Acts chapter 22, this was who Paul's teacher was. And notice here, look here, Gamaliel's name means reward of God or God's reward with good or God rewards with good. He is a teacher of the law, and the first thing he does is command them to put the apostles outside for a little while. Now, when we look at this guy, who in the world was this guy to be barking orders in such a way? You know, these were the religious leaders, but here's this man that stands up and says, Hey, put these guys outside. Hold on. He was a scholar, we know that about him, highly respected we see among all the people. Notice here, he must have been a big influence among the Sanhedrin because he here speaks not for sympathy for the church, but understand this, but from insight, I believe in God's sovereignty working in situation. It was said of him in the, what is known as the Talmud, the Jewish writings, that it said this, when rabbin, they didn't even call him rabbi. That's how highly respected he was. They called him rabbin, Gamaliel, the elder died. It says that the, Jew, the Jews, it says, the glory of the Lord ceased and purity and abstinence died. That's how self-righteous this man was. And so notice here, we know here, again, as we mentioned, Acts 22 tells us about Paul being trained by Gamaliel. But here, his counsel here, I believe, is unwise in the way. So it's the sovereignty of God working, but really unwise and dangerous because God uses it to save the apostles while they're plotting to kill them. But here we'll see what he says, not in a totality, is wise because of what he says in verses 35 through 38. And we'll see that. But before we go even further, the religious leaders here were furious because they were losing control. Because they were confronted with the truth. Truth that cuts to the heart. And so they, even as they killed Jesus, understand this. God was still at work because they, were, they had killed Jesus, but God did what with Jesus? Raised him from the dead. Here, watch this. Understand. How do you respond to truth? Do you get furious, angry, and, and, and irate with truth when it cuts you? Or do you really allow the words of truth to, yes, not only cut you, but also allow you to respond in a different manner. You see, a lot of times when, you know, someone hits you, you know, they say if you throw a, 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 a stone into a pack of dogs, what happens? The one that gets hit is going to what? Bark the loudest. And you know, the, it, it's the truth is when, when somebody hits you with the truth, sometimes we lose it instead of pulling back and really considering God, what are you saying to me? You know, those of us who are married, we know about this very well, right? And I say we because I've been married for over 22 years. And, and so I know when, when the stones get to throwing, ah, ah, I know that. I don't say, oh God, you know, I'm so holy. Pray for my sinful wife. I, uh -uh, that's not what it is. The stones get thrown and, and, and it gets to, ah, and defense comes on. I didn't mean the theatrics, but that's the reality. And you see here, look, understand, there is truth. And sometimes truth comes from your closest companions. 
They just know you so well. So when they tell you something, you get real defensive, but the reality is that's the truth. Well, no, that's your truth. No. Would you at least take it into the prayer closet and consider it and see what God may say to you about it? But here, these guys get hit with the truth of truth, that Jesus is the only way. And by the way, you killed him. I, I love this because you know what? They were threatened not to talk about Jesus, but they come back and they're standing in front of the authorities and they're speaking with clarity, not watering down the message, not thinking about themselves, holding their lives dear to themselves, but they're on mission with God's mission and they're telling these guys, hey, you killed them. Here, look, understand this. They're furious. But I wonder, are you a communicator of truth? Or are you more concerned about people's feelings than sharing truth with others? God's truth, number one. But then even what you discern. When God gives you a, a, a word, well, I, I, who am I to say that to them? Oh, we understand. We're just the vessels. But when God gives you something and he tells you to speak, normally it's very uncomfortable. You know, those people that walk around, oh, I got a word from God for you. Okay, I'll hear it because God can use anybody. And I'll take it in my closet. But you know what, the person that's wrestling, man, I don't want to say this. Man, you know what, and they're going through that process. But yet and still, with obedience, they go forth and they speak. Oh, God will use you. God will use you, but you have to be willing to be okay with being obedient to his mission. Are you the one who would stand up like Gamaliel did when you know things are not being done correctly? How do you use your influence? You see, because all of us have a level of influence, but how do you use your influence among the people that you are around, the people that you have an opportunity to influence? How do you influence them? How do you use your influence? Are you willing to stand up, or are you just the blind leading the blind and following each other into some harmful direction? In verse 35, it says, And he said to them, Men of Israel, this is what he said, Take heed to yourself what you intend to do regarding this me these men. For some time ago, Thutius rose up claiming to be something. A number of men, about 400, joined him. And he was slain, and all, the, the, all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. And after this man, Judas of Galilee, not Judas Iscariot, but here, understand, another Judas said, it said of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him and also perished. And all who obeyed him were dispersed. Notice here, Gamaliel tells um, them to take heed to themselves. In other words, be careful. But he, notice though, he automatically classifies Jesus with two other rebels, Studius and Judas. Now, if you read people like Josephus, you will think that, you know, uh, there's a, maybe a discrepancy. The reality is this, is that there were many Thutiuses, if I'm saying the name correctly. There were many of these guys around. It was a common name. And so when Josephus speaks of one, here Luke is speaking of another Thutius. But when you look at Josephus' writings in light of Judas, they talk about the same people. And so that's one thing to know. Nonetheless, we don't know much about these people, but Gamaliel refers to them and he kind of puts Jesus on the same level as them. Here, look, this means that he already had rejected the evidences of Jesus 
being on the scene and what Jesus had done. To him, the, this Jesus of Nazareth was just another zealous Jew. But note this. The truth of the matter is, Theodius and Judas never did the things that Jesus did. That's the big difference. They never accomplished what Jesus had done. When it comes to the prophecies of the Bible, they weren't the ones who were producing the evidence of the Messiah. But we know that Jesus fulfilled many of the prophecies. And here, look, understand this. Gamaliel also assumes that history will repeat itself. Oh, yeah, you know what? This happened with before. This was Studius and, and Judas, yeah. This Jesus, the same thing going to happen. Just, just leave him alone, guys. That, that's his posture here. And so look here. He assumes that they'll scatter, but understand this, there was more than 400 people. Right now, the church has grown probably up to about 8,000 or more people. This is a problem. And here he's saying, hey, leave him alone. But I want us to see this here because notice how Gamaliel compares them to Jesus. But I want to tell you something about this verse here. In verse 36, it says, some time ago, Thutius rose up and what did he do? What does your Bible say? He claimed to be somebody. <laughs> That's interesting. Because when you look at Jesus, here we understand from Philippians chapter 2 that Jesus made himself of no reputation. He wasn't walking around claiming to be somebody. He was living and showing who he was to be and was. Here, look, that's the difference here when we see that Jesus wasn't claiming anything but living it out. Here, look, understand this. Do we take heed to ourselves, as we see in verse 30, um, 35, do we take heed to ourselves like Amelia gave them this counsel, or are we less concerned about how we go about dealing with others? You see, this was good counsel, I believe. Hey, guys, take heed to yourself how you deal with these men. A lot of times we don't do that. A lot of times we deal with people the way we feel like. When it comes to correcting others, understand this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 says this. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. Oh, we better take heed to ourselves first before we go and dealing with other people's matters. Here, look, understand this. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 16, take heed to yourself and your teaching, continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. It was a dual thing. Hey, you know what? Deal with your own heart, Timothy, and then go teach. Here, look, understand this. And the second question is, are we claiming, in other words, talking, boasting, bragging, that telling people that we're somebody, well, you know what? The Bible tells us, in fact, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 3, if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. I know we think we hot stuff. You made me sing here right now. I, you may not be nobody, but my self-esteem tell me I'm somebody. You are nothing. In fact, the reality is this, is that all that we are and all that we have, we receive from the grace of God. That's the truth. And it's only by His grace. I don't care what level, what measure God is using you in. It's all Him. And we can, you know, sometimes we get away from the reality of the truth of that. And we, we get real spare. Oh, it's only the Lord. Yes, that is the truth. And we need to be reminded of that. Because it's real easy to try and steal the glory of God. Oh no, it's me. No, it's not. It's God's grace upon us. And we can't forget that. Here, look. Will we be impact, 
affected by Jesus' example or these rebels' example? Because we really must consider what effect are you having on others? Because if you're walking around bragging about you being somebody, I guarantee you that's the effect that you're giving off on other people. And other people are being affected by it either in a positive sense or a negative sense. They want to embrace that which is negative, right? Or they're turned off by it. And they're like, who do you think you are? You see, Jesus was one that was walking with humility but having major effect and impact. And how beautiful it is when you see just humble, simple people moving through life. Because they understand themselves. They understand what even Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says. Hey, don't think so highly of yourself, but think soberly, evenly. You know, there's some people that think real low about themselves. God's saying, yo, you can bring that up. But don't think all oh, high-minded about yourself neither. You need to bring that down. But think soberly. And here, look, as we consider this, understand this. Proverbs tells us in 27, verse 2, he says, Let another man praise you, and not your own mouth. How about that? A stranger, and not your own lips. There's a lot of boast work going on out here. You know, you think about the post, you know. Many people, even right now, it's just past Christmas, you know, even in ministry. Oh, look what we're doing for the people. That's real easy to get caught up in. I, you know, it's funny. We, we just got blessed this past week. A tractor trailer pulled up right in front of the house in the church. I mean, like, boom. We got all this food we need to get rid of and bless the people. Can you get people? And so, you know, I had to put it on social media for the sake of getting the people out. And I told people to share. Hey, get out. Come out now. This was a, you know, a random blessing. But I don't really like to put out everything we do. And number one, I think it exploits people. And secondly, I also believe that, you know what? It's God's shine, and it's real easy to believe your own press clippings. And so, you know what? Yes, I know we live in a social media time, and you know what? And, they, and people are blessed by it. Yes, I get that. But, you know, the reality is we need to be careful how we use these platforms, even in ministry, you know? But here, look, understand this. Let somebody else sing your praise. Oh, no, they're taking too long. Maybe you don't need any praise. Here, look, maybe God wants you to just keep it simple. And I tell you what, this is one thing, if you can take away something today, you are impacting people's lives more than you think. That's the truth. And so here, look, understand, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 says, for now, not, um, for not he who commands himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. And that's something to consider. Are you commending yourself? Or are you allowing the Lord to com commend you? There's no need to boast, but just let God show you forth. Let him use you. Here. We see this man here, Judas, what did he do? He drew away people after himself. And people have done this in times past, right here in this building. You know, there's even to the point of what ultimately ended up in death. And I'll tell you what, as the overseer, I'm responsible to step into those spaces now. Once realizing that, seeing that more and more, I'm responsible. And so you know what? When there's Judas types around, I'll step into that now. One of the pastors, would, I'll, I'll have a conversation with him to step into that now. Why? Because there are people who draw away people after themselves. And notice what happens in the passage. It tells us that he, these people, what? When he also perished, and they all who obeyed him, they were dispersed. And that's what normally happens when people get caught up in this kind of stuff and activity. And so look here. If you're this type, you need to repent of it. But I have to tell you this. I'm just being honest to, with you. If I get wind of it, I'm getting involved with it. Because I care about people. And we're not going to infect 
or impact people in a negative sense. We, that's not our desire. And so here, what we see here is that we need to be careful not to try and draw away people after ourselves. In verse 38, it says, And now I say to you, this is still Gamaliel speaking, Keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. Gamaliel's counsel here, he's counseling them to keep away from these folks, to avoid the apostles. These men, in other words, he's saying, leave them alone and permit them, allow it to be that these men will move forward. He says, if it's a plan of man, then you know what? It's going to come to nothing. In other words, it's going to be thrown, thrown down, detached, and destroyed. It'll be nothing but Haha, if it is of God, you can't overthrow it. You can't destroy it. Lest even you be found fighting against God. It sounds good at face value, I tell you that. But when we consider this, the council has some truth, but it is not quite accurate. If you were and I was to look at Islam, it's a, it's a growing religion, right? And, and if you look at it, hey, is that a work of God? No, nobody wants to say anything, huh? I'll say it. No, it's not. And so look, understand this. You look at Jehovah Witnesses in the cult. That thing has grown. It's grown beyond their even belief. They thought that it was only going to be 144,000 to be. So that's what they thought was entering into paradise. But look here. They've grown over that. So now they had to shift their doctrines. And so look here. Is that a work of God? No. You think of Mormonism and, and, and all other kinds of isms that we can go down the line and talk about. These things grow but is it really a work of God? Look, you can even look at the prosperity gospel. Those things, those pieces are packed. But look, there are things that grow that are men's work, but I want you to see this. This is the difference, I believe, when you think of eternal and temporarily. Oh, you know what? Oh, it may grow temporarily, but ultimately, it's going to come to nothing. But eternally, when you and I are continuing to walk in the truth, you know what? You can't stop this. You can't overthrow this. Here, and when we see this here, he said, leave him alone. But notice here, are you able to take your hand off of things and see what God will do? That's really the question and the test for us. When we see things happening that we don't agree with, hey, you know what, can we fall back and just say, God, I trust you. I'll take my hands off of it, and let's see what you do with it. How about taking your hands off and moving into your prayer closet? Put your hands on in that way. How about that? Here, look, understand this. Do, you, do we think we are doing God's work? while in reality we are fighting against him? You see, when early on in ministry, I thought I was doing God's work by going into a lot of these churches and trying to correct their doctrine. But you know what? That was just a little zealous punk going into these places that God wasn't really telling me to go into. I just thought I knew something and now I'm going to fix Newark right away. Oh, well, God taught me something. <laughs> but look here. This is the reality. Do we have discernment to what is and what is not of God? Can you discern by just what the Spirit is saying and what you know that the Word is communing? That's not of God. And that is of God. But I'll tell you what, something else I see about Gamaliel here, he didn't have confidence to speak 
directly. That's not of God. That is of God. Here he's, well, you know, we'll see if, if it's going to be this or, or if it's going to be that. Hey, speak up, man. You're a leader. And here, that's what we see here. He's saying, hey, you know what? Hey, well, maybe that's why they liked him so much. And that's why he was respected, you know. But look, understand this. There is a time that we have to stand up and say, this is and this is not. How about that? And so when we think about this here, look at verse 40. It says, and they agreed with him. And when they had called the apostles, notice what happens. They beat them. Why? Look, this is what they did after they beat them. And they didn't just do one of those little, you know, some of y'all nice moms. Oh, stop, Bobby. Go over there and sit down. That's not what happened. This is what happened. Probably about 39 lashings is what happened. And this was, watch this. Here he says, they beat them and then they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and then they let them go. Now, this to me is a powerful verse because these people are agreeing with Gamaliel as they bring the apostles back in they beat them, whipped them for speaking the truth. That's why they spanked them. They beat them because they were doing miracles. They beat them because they didn't agree with them. And so watch this here. And they command them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and then they let them go, assuming they had a reference place. What do you mean by that? They had a reference place in that beating. Ah, oh, that hurt so much. I'm never speaking again. After that, they assumed they had a reference place. But notice, here as you consider your own life, what will you do? What do you do? What do you do? In hardship, in difficult times, you know what? When, 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 the, when the sufferings start to come in your life and there's these times of attack, you know, what do you do in that time? Well, you know, I better just fall away from God and, and leave that ministry kind of stuff alone because you know what? It's very easy going this way. What do you do when the enemy commands you? Don't speak in that name of Jesus no more because I'll put you through it. You look, this is the kind of stuff that was happening to Job on a heavier level. But Job was getting right back in it. Look here, look, understand this. These guys get beat, but watch this. I wonder what we will do. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2, you may be familiar with it. It says, after the hall of faith, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Watch this. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, he's our motto, he's the effect that's had on our lives. This is what he's had on these men's lives. And watch this. It says, for the joy that was set before him, notice what he does. He endured the cross. Watch this. Despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, we want to sit down on the throne, but we don't want to deal with the shame. And here, look, understand this. When you look and consider this here, we have onlookers. We have onlookers who have gone before, and then we have onlookers who are in this world. They hear about this Christ that you and I speak of. They're onlookers. Here, these guys had onlookers. If they would have never spoke again, what would have been the church? Oh, these are the leaders. Oh, if they're falling away in a time of pressure. What are we going to do? Here, look, understand this. As we come to a close, notice what they did do. 
Verse 41 and 42, it says, So they departed from the presence of the council. We need to underline this. It says, Rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for Jesus' name's sake. Here, look. And when? Daily. Wow. In the temple. Where they were arrested, you mean? Yes. And in, in every house, they did not cease doing what? Teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. These guys had to be filled with the Spirit. Either that or they were crazy. Look, they proceed from the council and are glad about it. They're glad that they just got whipped. They're glad they, they, got, they went through some suffering. You see, this is when you have to step out of the times of difficulty and get a broader perspective because you got to remember they were released. Remember, they were released from prison miraculously. They were used to heal. But now they're in this time where they're getting beat and we're thinking, oh, you know what? We shouldn't go through suffering because we're believers. We're the king's kids, aren't we? But oh, if you read the Bible... God had prophets who next were cut off. The apostles, all of them die a martyr's death, except for John the Bat I mean John. And so when you think about the persecution, the hardship, the difficulty, oh, you know what? How about this? The reality is we will suffer persecution. We don't know at what level, what measure, but you know what? Oh, you, you, you crashed your car. You lost your bus ticket. Oh, 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 what a trial. Oh, what a trial. In light of these men's lives. And what do they do? They get up and they get back into it. Right where, look here, this is just a little obedience. In Acts chapter 2, we know that they were moving from house to house and now they're daily, where? In the temple. And they're beaten, but they did not stop to teach, stop preaching and teaching. What did it take for them to go back daily into this temple? I believe it took a heart of commitment, a heart of loyalty, as we saw last week's message. But it also took an effect that Jesus had on their life. What an effect! that Jesus had on their life. And what is the effect that Jesus is having on your life today? You see the logo there this week is, some of you may be familiar with it, Thor. I don't know a lot about Thor, but I know one thing is when Thor got to swinging that hammer, stuff was happening. I also know this, that he was the only one that could lift it up. And there are some things that God has placed in your life in a mission to follow in this life according to what he's commissioned you to do. Nobody else can pick it up. Nobody else can step into that lane, but it's for you to walk in. And here, as you think about this, what effect will you have in going forth as Jesus has affected your life? There are sufferings in this life, but there are also good times. And we got to take the good with the bad. What effect will we have on others? I need to learn this. I need to learn, hey, you know what, to constantly be able, because sometimes I get stuck. I know to step back, but I don't often step back. I, I'll go through it for a while, get in this place, and then for after many days maybe, I step back. And think about, oh, oh yeah, that's right. It's just a season of suffering right now. But oh, what greatness God has done. And so when we think about this here, consider. These guys, watch this, these guys went against their feelings. They were hurt. They were beaten. That hurts. They probably didn't feel like getting up in the morning and going back into the temple. 
But as long as they were alive, they were committed to move beyond their feelings. Some of us may not feel like it. Maybe this morning you didn't feel like coming to church. You didn't feel like coming together, but God wanted to say something to you. And you understood that, so you worked past your feelings. There's a lot of things in my life that I don't feel like doing. Somebody said that's the, the new F word. Four-letter word. Start with F. Y'all went somewhere else, but I'm not going there. But this F word, feel. I feel this. Or I feel like God is saying this. What is God saying? Hey, I know that God is saying this. I know this. Hey, this is what I know that God is doing in my life. Not I, oh, I feel. Relax. Just trust the Lord and know what he is saying. Be still, the Bible says, and know what? That he is God. Here, there's a difference between moving in our feelings versus what we know God is doing. And as we close, I said that five minutes ago, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 11, I'll leave us with this. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despaired, not in despair persecuted but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Look here. These guys, to walk in this kind of manner, took trusting God. Just trusting God with their life and continue obedience. You heard it said, what doesn't kill you will only what? Make you stronger. Look here. What kind of effect in your suffering time and in your high time will you have on others as Jesus is affecting you. Father, we thank you for your living word today. And we ask, Lord God, that you would be the impact in our life. And that the effect, Lord God, would impact others. We pray for those who have yet come to know you. What an effect the grave had when you emptied it and rose again with power. Father, we thank you for the shed blood that covers us from sin. And we thank you, Lord, today that we could say yes to you. Put our trust in you, God. But I pray as the walls cave in and things get difficult, God, that we would remember that we are not destroyed. That life comes after death. I pray, God, you would just go before us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's stand to our feet.